Hello, Internet. This is Aaron uh, of the Evac Station three-way podcast shenanigan hour. I'm making up all sorts of words now. Uh, with me today to celebrate the finale of Korra, I have uh, my good friends Nicole and Aaron. Hey, guys. Hi. Hey. And um, so we're going to be talking about Legend of Korra for the next, God, I don't know, I have no idea, maybe an hour, maybe five hours, probably Insert only an hour. Here. What? Insert time here. Insert time here. I'll, <laughs> I'll put an image up somewhere. I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, so just a quick uh, heads up on who everyone is. I know I, uh, I'm i the one who kind of got Aaron pushed into more Avatar and more Korra, and she's sort of a fan of it because of me. Sort oh, of. Uh, a little, I'm a major fan. Yeah. And then, uh, Nicole, I remember back in high school, you absolutely hated <laughs> Avatar completely. And it wasn't so until fast. maybe like... A few years ago when I talked to you, you're like, oh, this is the greatest show ever. I don't recall outright hating it. That is a bold statement to you. <laughs> I remember you didn't like it, though. I remember that much. All right, I'll go with that. I probably didn't like it at first, but then giving it a second watch. But, uh, so yeah, we, we are all here to talk about that. Um, before we do, does anyone have anything they want to talk about beforehand? Any, um, just random bullshit to talk about? <laughs> I'll take a, I'll take as a no. Cricket, cricket, cricket. <laughs> you need uh, to edit a tumbleweed in there. I'll, I'll edit some tumbleweed in there. It'll be fun. <laughs> um, all right, then well, I guess we'll just kick right off into it. So, uh, what happened uh, back in? It was December, right? When the last episode aired. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like second week, but uh, yeah. So December was the season finale of Legend of Korra. A lot of great things to talk about there. Uh, so we'll start talking about the last season in general, then we'll talk about the finale, because a lot of stuff to talk about there, and then kind of just the series as a whole, and if we have extra time, maybe we'll make fun of Nintendo or Ubisoft or make, <laughs> or Sony even, because they have a shitstorm at the end of the year, too. Um, it actually aired on December 19th, 2014, to be exact, and I know that because I had to pull up the summaries of the episodes, because my brain is not remembering things very well right now. <laughs> oh, look, 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 look at someone doing <laughs> doing, doing on-the-air on the research. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Wow, Aaron, get your shit together. I had that pulled up way before. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay, guys, way to go, way to go. Here, I'll send it to you. There you go. There's a link. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up right now, just so that way I don't feel left out. <laughs> um, oh, Legend of Korra episodes. Uh, Welcome to Republic City. Just so you guys know, that was April 14th, 2012. Mm, in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and start with the finale. So, uh, or not finale, but the season. So, what do you guys think of the season overall? Don't everyone jump up at once. <laughs> cricket, cricket, crickets. <laughs> All the crickets. A lot of crickets. Uh, I thought the season was really good. Um, I enjoyed that Cora wasn't there for the first beginning, that she was, you know, selling that injury of, you know, that was pretty like cool. All this stuff that happened with uh, Zaheer. That was pretty cool, especially because they had a follow-up episode with uh, Korra alone. And yeah. it, it was just kind of like an interesting take on the character since we've never really seen her in that kind of vulnerable state before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it really, it kind of, it changed her character a lot because, I mean, you saw the evolution of Korra throughout all four seasons with the beginning having her being very... Um, egotistical and with this season you see her kind of be coming full uh coming around to where she realizes she is vulnerable and she isn't the most powerful anymore but she's still willing to sacrifice her life for the people she cares about and for the world which i think is really cool to see that in her character because before it was like oh hey yeah i can defeat all this now she's like ah. No, nope, but I'm still going to do it. I know I might be killed, but I'm still going to do it because I have to for the good of everybody. Yeah, especially with that finale of season three kind of leading into that where she did literally put her life on the line and then you saw the aftermath of that. It was just... I still I still love this finale of season three. I thought that was really well done. And That was insane. And it's, I, I thought it'd be really hard to match that, but I think season four's finale did a pretty good job stepping up to the plate and hitting a good episode out of the park there. Um, uh, I will say that I was very happy. Oh, shit. What happened? Uh, what was a problem with the call? Hold on. Okay, hang on. Her call got dropped. Should I bring her back in? 
Yeah. Uh, how do we... You back in? Yeah. Was okay. that me that dropped out? Uh, yeah, you got dropped out and Nicole was still here for some reason. <laughs> and then, oh, she... Oh. 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 She disappeared again. She's entered the void. She's Oh, she's back. Okay, I'm back. I don't know what's going on. My internet's working fine. L- ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing technical difficulties. It's probably a ghost. <laughs> We're always experiencing. <laughs> it's most likely a ghost. It's most likely a ghost. Um, but what I was what I was trying to say was, um, I was really happy though at the beginning of the season when we saw what happened to the characters and Mako was basically the whipping boy of some annoying little punk king dude. I'm like, oh yes. my god, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like. I didn't like him in the first season, but he was tolerable. And then as the series went on, he just became more and more annoying and less and less fun. So I'm like, yeah, no, I'm happy to see him put in his place. <laughs> it's really quiet. <laughs> 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 maybe, I should, maybe I should see if I get yeah. Connor on. Maybe he'll uh, break the silence with just some random bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just wait for my birds to start cooing. They'll break the silence. Can I just say Yay Toph? Like, Major Yay Toph yeah. came back? <laughs> I was really glad to have her back as a cameo. Um, I expected her to be in there for the final battle, but I, I totally get why she wasn't. It, w- it was cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, she still kicked ass when she, she did fight. It was like, yep, there's the old Toph. <laughs> yeah, I, I really wish we could see a series where, of, of just her growing up and being an adult and everything, but we got something pretty good there. I, I was happy with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, especially because of that one line, which is like, you give be- metal benders a bad name. I'm like, yep, that, that yep. works. That works. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, metal bending, Jesus Christ, that was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Only I, I want to say that was probably one of the most, like, violent of the, you know, the elemental bending. Because, crap, they could just send those shards of metal right through your heart. <laughs> um, I, I was just, like, expecting more of them just to whip out some of those metal blades. Like, bitch, I cut you. And then they just come exactly. at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then there's also that uh, Super Omega Death Cannon. I mean, Jesus, what, what was the hell? Holy shit. Uh-huh. And did you notice that it sounded very much like the sound that Batu made when he would, you know, blast everybody? It's like they repeated that. Oh, oh yeah. When they uh, when Varric first made the laser beam, I immediately thought that I'm like, yep, this is going to either bring back Batu or it's going to be something worse. Yeah, it sound. I it's like they they took the dark negative energy that was Batu and they put it into that cannon and that's where the sound came And then strap the cannon on a mech. Yes. Oh, <laughs> man. Gigantic mech. Th- that mech. I felt like I was watching Pacific Rim all over again. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing For we needed was more kaiju. Was doing attack on Titan. Oh, man. It's such a good, like, just final battle there with all that cr- crap going on. <laughs> I, I could just, Aaron, I could just imagine, like, a chibi you just, like, bouncing off the walls with excitement being the mech. <laughs> that was that was literally how that whole episode, it reminded me of back when I, it reminded me of when I saw that final episode of season one of Ruby, where they had the Gunchaku reveal. Oh my god, yeah. Like, when that happened, I immediately exploded, and here it's pretty much the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um... But no, at, at the same time, as cool as it was, I was sort of just like, isn't that kind of bullshit? Because, I mean, we're supposed to be in, like, we're, we're supposed to have just invented the car and the plane. How do we go from that to giant mech? Right! <laughs> Sorry. Shh, we just don't talk about it. Like, I mean, even our, even in modern times, a giant mech is completely unfeasible. how they pull it off? Right, exactly. I mean, they couldn't get, even get the, um, what were they, the, um, the hummingbird? Uh, the hummingbird mechs—is that be, what they were? To be to fair, fly. They, they, they did pull it off. It's just they were kind of rushed for time. If they had more time, they probably could have done a this better job. Yeah, this is true. To be fair, they had like ten minutes to get a prototype working. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yo, Varric, I, I'm going to let you finish, but we need this thing up and running now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have one question to ask: Were either of you disappointed with like the whole reveal of? Um, who Toph was with to have her daughters or daughter I should say wait what was that I didn't catch the middle part like when they had the big reveal of um oh my god Lin, Lin's father was it Lin's father oh who the fathers were yeah yes. I, at least Lin's was um I wasn't disappointed I actually kind of felt that while well, I would have loved to have known who they were 
it sort of fits Toph's character to just kind of be dismissive about the whole thing. <laughs> That's true. It's I just like, wanted something more. <laughs> oh no, it's the same thing with uh, Zuko's mom. Like, we always wanted to know what happened, and if you read the comics, uh, you do find out, but yeah. um, in the TV show, it was always disappointing we never really got a concrete answer in there. Well, with Toph, it would seem like that would be the sort of relationship where she said, oh, he was a good guy, but it didn't work out. It seems like that would happen with Toph. Well, I mean, you yeah. kind of get that vibe, too, when Korra's asking her to tell stories about how, like, they saved the world from the Fire Nation. She's like, oh, yeah, you we were on a blimp. We crashed it. It was cool. <laughs> it was cool. It was a good day. <laughs> Which I think is very fitting for our characters, because it's like, what do you want me to do? Describe things? I can't see! <laughs> uh, it reminds me of the episode where it's like, uh, where they're in the desert looking for something, and Tom's like, hey, look, I see it over there. And everyone's like, where? And she's like... <laughs> And white waving her hand in front of her face, like I'm blind. That's what I would say when somebody spots it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that. Uh, oh my gosh. I may be blind, but even I can see the sweet taste of honey nut Cheerios. It's <laughs> 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 uh, dark down here. Oh no! What a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did anyone else? Did anyone else during the season? get a really big, like, Iron Man vibe from Varric the entire time. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's totally Tony oh, Stark. God, yes. <laughs> Let's be real here. That is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> like, every five minutes he had some new invention or some new, like, way to stop a, like, a mech, mech problem. I'm like, what the hell? Are you, like, fucking, like, channeling the inner Tony Stark in you right now? <laughs> I was half expecting... And he... <clears throat> I was half expecting him to fly around in his own Iron Man suit by the end of the series. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he did kind of have a giant mech, but Ju- uh, Julie kicked ass with the mech more than he did. <laughs> oh, man, Julie, like, Julie. she won the episode that time. That was great. <laughs> she was amazing. Julie, do the thing! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that wedding proposal at the very end, that was pretty sweet. I liked it. That was awesome. Yeah, that, was- that was so fitting for them. Mm. By the way, I would like to make a point for the people who are listening to this that um, Aaron's avatar is Varric with these shiny, sparkly, wonderful teeth. <laughs> yeah. So I think we can guess your favorite character. My, my favorite character is totally, uh, totally uh, t- Eleven Toed Pain or whatever his name is. <laughs> the Rock. <laughs> oh, the Boulder. The Boulder, <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> no, the, the Rock's the wrestler. The Boulder is his arch enemy. <laughs> Let's let's not get into wrestling. <laughs> oh yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't talk about any wrestling here. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I would I would love to see like just the boulder face the rock and just some sort of like head to head like death match would be great. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got earth bending versus the people's elbow. Is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it. I think it's a fair fight. Totally fair fight. <laughs> Um, okay, so a question here, I, it's a little bit, um, what is the word I'm thinking of? Uh, I don't remember what the word I'm thinking of is, but what do you guys think of the, uh, like, physical change in court? Like, with the whole hairstyle, the outfit change, all that? I thought it was pretty cool looking. I liked it, uh, especially when she started facing, like, her ghost self, and her ghost self was what her former self looked like. Like, I thought that was really interesting, and also, like, having her cut off her hair like that, it seemed like a transformation for her. Like, I'm letting go of the child I used to be and becoming a stronger let woman. Let <laughs> no, 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 no. I already had somebody at work get that song stuck in my head. And I even know the guy. Well, now it's back. <laughs> um, no, I totally agree. I especially, I, and I agree with the ghost uh, phantom Cora, whatever you want to call her. Um, like, every episode she was in and every frame she was in, I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. She's, like, stalking her. It's really creepy and awesome at the same time. It was so disturbing. I watched one of those episodes late one night, and I'm like, I don't want to go to sleep right now. This is creepy. <laughs> you, you, you close your eyes, and when you, like, open them in the middle of the night, you just see her face staring right at you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I was, the, the weird thing about that, though, is I don't know if they really adequately explained that. Um, that whole phenomenon, because, I mean, she appears for a little bit, and it seems like she's a ghost, because no one else can see her, and then she actually can physically hurt Korra, 
and then she disappears for a bit, and then she reappears suddenly in that fight against um, uh, Kuvira, and then she's just gone pretty much the entire rest of the series. Well, was she actually hurting Korra, or was it more like a mental battle? It was hurting. I assumed it like, was a Korra. mental battle. I, I assumed it was she. It was really there because one, the spirit like that helped her out could see it, and two, you could see the physical damage caused by it. So I don't. I don't know. Yeah, but True. spirits are also more connected to the Avatar because you know she's the Avatar. That is a fair point, but I still feel like a little more exploration that would have been cool. No, and I agree with you. Like, I wish they had done more with that. Like, maybe when she went to see Zaheer, like, when he helped her through that, which was really weird but cool at the same time, like, maybe have Korra, have had Korra, like, destroy that dark spirit of hers Like, in some kind of, like, like yeah. thumb wrestling battle or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thumb bending, go. <laughs> Um, no, no, I totally agree, and, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, I think the whole Zaheer thing was definitely another one of those, uh, Legend of Korra, like, speed road bump, or roadblocks, where it's like, they have an episode, they have to solve the problem, and they just kind of do it in that episode, they don't, like, let it be, a like, a story arc, kind of, just feel like it just, it concludes really quickly, is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and we'll probably get into that later when we talk about the series as a whole, but I just felt like that was kind of the... That was kind of the Achilles heel of this show, is where it just problems seemed to resolve themselves really quickly. Whereas yeah. whereas Avatar, it seemed like it took a whole season to resolve any conflicts. Well, I mean, look at it this way, like with um, with, with the original Avatar, every season had like 26 episodes, or, or more than a lot more than that. Yeah, I think whereas Legend like of Korra, it's cut, pretty much cut in half, so they don't have as much time to oh, no, solve I, 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 and, and, I agree, and I agree with you. I, the main reason that that happened too is just because Nickelodeon's an asshole and they were doing budget cuts. But I yeah, mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. For what the creators were able to put out, and for all the like stumbling blocks they had on the way, they did a really good job with it. So you know, kudos to them. Kudos to them. Yeah. For how good the last season is, the whole Zaheer to hear thing is like a nitpick to me. It really is kind of. It, it, yeah, it was it was a nitpick. Like the only episode in that last season that really was like legitimately bad was that clip show episode. Yeah. And and even the creators when they went on Twitter and said, "Yeah, this episode's bad, guys. We apologize, yeah. but we didn't have a choice." <laughs> was it just like it was either a clip killer? show or we fire a whole bunch of people? I really <laughs> felt bad when I heard about that. I'm like, oh, really? Nickelodeon pulled that bullshit on you? Well, fuck them then. Wait, what happened? You didn't hear about this? No. So basically what happened is in production of season four, Nickelodeon gave the creators, I don't remember their name, I'm terrible with names, but they gave them um, this, an ultimatum. You can either do it, you can either give us, you, you have to fire 30, uh, like part of your staff um, mm-hmm. before the uh, season's over. Um, but wait, no, I remember, I remember what it was now. Uh, they didn't give an ultimatum, they just cut their budget, and the money that they were cut was either going to need to be used for a whole episode or to pay people for an entire week so they could either keep everyone around for a week and like scramble together a clip show or they could um not do a clip show and do a regular episode but then they have to fire like a whole bunch of people holy crap that's ridiculous let it be known though this is not the first time nickelodeon has screwed over avatar in any shape way shape or form they've done this a bunch of times before (laughs) Well, considering with even with the the season series finale, yeah, series finale, like they kept switching it between TV and then computer, the computer, the TV, and like the last second before the finale, they're like, oh, oh we're gonna change it again. Well, going so far back as uh, Last Airbender, even uh, season three, I remember for the longest time there was a huge hiatus between seasons two and three, and we never knew when it was gonna come back on. And mm. then episodes released on DVD that never showed on air. And then they did a whole month of just every episode all at once, and it's like, what? Where'd these come from? What happened to the rest of the season? Yeah. And it's like, okay, that never, it never made any sense. And it's part of the just they don't support the show, and yet they expect it to be successful. And you have to wonder why they think that works. Right, and then then they wonder why the ratings are so scurried. It's like, well, when you show it on a bunch of different platforms, you don't tell anybody. Why do you think and it's going to no be different? Sports. Right. Like I remember when the third or fourth season was announced, I think it was the third one, um, advertisements only started running maybe a week or two before it actually aired, and, I mean, that, that's ridiculous. Like, who does that? I mean, well, Jurassic, Jurassic World had trailers come out this past month in December. That doesn't come out till like, July. Come right. on, guys. Get your act together. Chris Pratt can well, do it. 
<laughs> and also, like, I had no idea that they were, like, we thought that the third season of Legend of Korra would be it. And then at the last second, they're like, nope, kidding, we're going to have a fourth season. Oh, hey, it's going to start in, like, two weeks. Really? That really like, did kind of just kind of nowhere. <laughs> That was so confusing. I mean, I'm glad we got more Legend of Korra because it didn't feel complete to me. But still, what horrible advertiser. Who was their, you know, did their anyone, PR advertiser? Did anyone else think it was weird that for the seasons that had like a three-year time gap or whatever, that it had the shortest amount of gap between the actual airing of the seasons? <laughs> <laughs> like, we know it's supposed to take place like two years later, but just, just pretend, just pretend. Just pretend. <laughs> Logic. It's like a month, but whatever. <laughs> uh, it was, it was can depressing. I just say that this app that Nick keeps pushing, it sucks. Oh, they mean the ability <laughs> yeah. to watch it on their app or website? Me, my yes. boyfriend, friend, every week we would get together and like, all right, let's watch this week's Korra. He, my boyfriend tried to pull up on his iPad, he can't. My friend tried to pull it up, he can't. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to break. Let me get this app. I get it. The worst designed piece of shit I have ever seen. Oh god, yes, it's it's hot. It's horrible. I, I finally found the episode after being buried under a bunch of SpongeBob and other stuff. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, the damn thing wouldn't load. Well, even on the like when I would try to do it on my computer, it wouldn't work that way either. I would get through like the first yeah. Either the first third or two thirds of it, and all of a sudden it would freeze on um, an advertisement. And I'm so sick, I was so sick of seeing those little skeletons dance around the Nickelodeon logo, but I couldn't watch it because when I restarted it, it restarted at the beginning and froze again, so I had to go through <laughs> another party. It was so frustrating. <laughs> yeah. It really was disheartening, especially because I managed to get the episodes to work every now and then. But the quality was low. They'd be freezing all the time. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it would ask me to put in my cable provider. I don't have a cable provider. I just do the <laughs> internet. So it's like I, there's so many stumbling blocks that they've done. It it reminds me of DRM for video games, where it's intrusive and makes the game less fun to play, and that's why people pirate it. They don't pirate it because they want free games. They want to pirate it because they don't want intrusive DRM making it impossible to play. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what's happening here. We pirate it or stream it on other sites because it's easier to actually watch it. Right. <laughs> like, I don't mind Which, commercials, but can we at least get it to function properly? Come on. Right, because, I mean, if you want proper ratings and everything like that, actually make the stupid vid- video viewable by people. Crap. Um, so that we can actually find the video on your shitty app. Exactly. I guarantee you the Spongebob videos probably work perfectly on that app. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. I think I click Spongebob would have worked perfectly. <laughs> I, I actually might test that after this recording just to see what happens. Just, I, I, I just, I'm just curious. Do it. <laughs> yeah, after Quora had ended, I had deleted the app. I'm like, no more. Oh, wait, no, I still have it. <laughs> you should keep it for TMNT. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Well, and it also, like, the Nickelodeon one, like, completely slowed my computer down. Like, I could barely watch it with that, too. Yeah, I, I, it was just a mess. Like, you, you'd think Nickelodeon... It's, it's really kind of sad, because it's hard to separate the business problems of Nickelodeon with the, like, artistic awesomeness of Korra, because one kind of feeds the other a little bit, and it just sort of... It's hard to keep them separated when right. you're talking about it. <clears throat> But, um, let's see, so we've been talking about the last season, so l- l- I guess we should probably move on to the finale unless there's anything anyone wants to get into specifically about the, like, season that we skipped over. All I can say is probably one of my favorite sections was when, uh, Bolin had to work with Varric, and Varric kept shouting, do the thing, and Bolin's like, I don't know what to think, do something! <laughs> I've seen so many forum posts wanting people to just, wanting the creators to do like a Bolin and uh, Varric like, like just short mini-series. Oh god, yeah. I, I would pay for that. That'd be awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, Alright, uh, to confirm, Spongebob videos do work instantly. I just tried. <laughs> we, we can put that one to rest. Alright. Alright, so um, uh, Spongebob confirm for Smash Bros. Next. Um. Confirm? <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, finale, uh, I guess we'll include the two, both parts, not just, the, like, the last episode, but, like, both part one and part two as one thing. So, um, yeah, what'd you guys think of the finale? 
mind blowing. <laughs> It was awesome. I, I would definitely say mind blowing and awesome would fit into that pretty well. Um, it, it reminded me of like the last Harry Potter movie where everyone just gets like a badass moment to do something cool. Yeah. E- even Mako, who doesn't deserve <laughs> something cool, got to do something cool. <laughs> I did like how um, um, like the prince actually had a part for like the last part of it. Like he actually pulled together for his people. I also thought, thought he was. was gonna... gonna... I honestly thought he was going to fade into the background. I'm really glad he didn't. Like, he Me too. Pulled, he pulled through. I'm so surprised that during that whole thing, the prince turns out to be a bard and uses his singing to charm those badger moles. <laughs> I, I lost my mind during that scene. My friend in part of me is like, you're not ready for this. And he's like, <laughs> uh, man, it, 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 that whole scene was weird, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, you know what? I can take this. He may be bad at singing, but this works. <laughs> It was hilarious. I will say, like, I loved most of the finale, but the, the I feel like the very end of it was a little hollow. I mean, it, it leaves with Korra and um, uh, Asami, like, going into the spirit realm, it leaves a lot of questions that, oh my god, all the fanfic that's probably going to happen <laughs> over that. But, Actually, um, um, uh, before you go on, uh, the creators of the series actually came out on I think it was Tumblr or Twitter or whatever it was. I think both. Both, yeah. They came out and actually said what you thought happened. Yeah, that happened. It happened. So, ah! Yeah, they, they're, yeah, they're confirming that... Your the ship is confirmed. That yes! they're, they're confirming that they are, in fact, a thing. <laughs> All the shipping! All the shipping! I was yes! told after that episode aired, Reddit blew up. There was one girl from the beginning who had been shipping Kor and Asami just stayed silent for the first hour and everyone thought that she was dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I thought it was hilarious and I, like, for the next week or so, I went to, like, different videos on YouTube and other stuff and you could just find comments just randomly throughout the internet that had nothing to do with Le- Legend of Korra at all. Just come up all of a sudden and say, Korra saw me for the win. I'm like, this has nothing to do with Legend of Korra. Why is this here? <laughs> I love it. That makes me so happy. Okay. Okay. Now that I know it's confirmed, that makes the ending, like, all that much more awesome for me. <laughs> I, I, I get why they had to keep it ambiguous, though. I mean, it is still technically a kid show, so you kind of have to leave it ambiguous, but it is nice the creators stepped out and actually admitted, yeah, we, we meant to do it this way. Okay. We just, we just couldn't. To be fair, I've, I've been watching, like, YouTubers react, kids react shows. They had an episode with kids react to, um, like homosexual relationships and they understood it and accepted it better than adults so I think they should have freaking blatantly came out with it screw everybody else (laughs) no no I totally agree with you the problem with that though is that you have to convince the network executives of that and we've seen time and time again they do not support this show if they they should it it wouldn't have been aired It, it probably would not have been aired this is true okay fine I think they actually did say in that, too, that they actually had other ways of wanting to show it off, but they couldn't because they kept getting sent back. I don't remember. Uh, but okay. It, it's disappointing, but it, it, we got we, we at least got confirmation. I'll, I'll take that over yeah. nothing. All the shipping. All the shipping. <laughs> All the ships. I'm just really glad that neither of them ended up back with Mako again because yeah. he, 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 he's not good enough for them. He's just not. <laughs> He's too much of a dick. I'm sorry. Like, he's funny when he's with Bo Lin. He has his funny moments. But he's a dick to women. <laughs> um, I, w- I, w- I would actually take Bo Lin over him any day of the yeah. week. Just because, like, he- yeah. at least he's entertaining and a good guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'm just remembering Bo Lin and his, uh, his water queen. And, yeah, all those episodes from the last couple seasons. <laughs> I'm just remembering back when uh, the whole love triangle thing happened in season one and you just saw Bolin's heart break. I'm like, aww, oh, poor guy. Let's just, just compare Bolin and Mako for a second. We have one who is a movie <laughs> star and can lava bend. And then we have the other one who can just fire bend and he can no, do a little lightning. No, but... he, yeah, no, no. We have the other one who lost his lightning bending because he lost balance within himself and then became the king's whipping boy and then got his li- his lightning bending back but let's admit it wasn't as cool it was not really cool no. 
yeah, it, it's hilarious just to kind of see the differences between the two of them. Yeah. <laughs> I love Bolin. He's just great. I mean, you needed that comic relief, obviously, with all the ser- some of the seriousness going on. Like, he was um, our, oh my god, I'm forgetting his name. Um, he was our uh, Sokka. Her. Uh- when the series started, I did compare him to Sokka, and I immediately didn't like him, because I'm like, you can't improve on Sokka. He, he, it's impossible. But as the series went on, I actually grew to like Bolin a lot more than I expected. Like, kudos. Kudos to the people who made him. They did a good job. <laughs> of course, I gotta wonder, who makes a better comic relief character? Bolin or Varric? Oh god, they're both hilarious. <laughs> Ultimate combo, Varric and Bolin. There we go. It's really hard to top that combo. Like, yeah. damn. <laughs> um, but that, that, okay, so one moment that really sticks out, that other than the uh, final scene, obviously, um, the uh, the new spirit portal being made. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. That was cool. Um, I will say that for the, for the first time in this entire Legend of Korra series, I didn't feel like the ending and the final victory was done deus ex machina. Like, I actually feel like this was legit. She could have done this, and was it, it all made sense. It all fit really well. Yeah. Agreed. Because season one, and we're kind of talking about the whole series now, but whatever. Um, but no, season one, uh, she just suddenly pulls wind ba- air bending out of her ass. And I'm like, okay, sure. I guess you had to do something. Um, sure, go with it. <laughs> season two... Uh, she doesn't have her light spirit, and all of a sudden, Janor just comes out of nowhere. Is like, here you go. And it's like, oh, final battle, kaiju style. And it's like, okay, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then season three was less of an issue, but I will say that there was some Deus Ex Machina in the episode before the finale, where, uh, what's his name, Zaheer, suddenly learns how to fly. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. You, you, were, about to, cool you were about to commit suicide. Admit it. <laughs> I just was, I just sat there. I'm like, WTF, Nickelodeon, WTF. He's just freaking flying with her on his back. What the crap? <laughs> like, I think it would have made more sense had they had he said the chant of like enter the void a little more often. Yeah. But there wasn't enough episodes for them to do that, so it's lose lose no matter how they did. They needed season three to have like twice the amount of episodes. To go through the villains because I really well quote unquote villains I really think they could have done so much more with them and it would made have made the season so much more interesting I mean, they, could, they could have done with any of the seasons honestly like any season could have definitely used an extra couple episodes to really like flesh out the details and make everything yeah. feel more more yeah <laughs> more. I would have liked it if you know they did have extra episodes to play around they would have focused like at least an episode just on Zaheer's group because just seeing them interact together that it was like watching an old episode of Pokemon where it's just Team Rocket oh I miss those episodes those, those are great episodes. <laughs> uh, prepare for trouble guys and make it devil <laughs> <laughs> well in that in that second to last episode Zaheer did blast off again <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think the other only person who really did any blasting was uh, uh, his girlfriend. Oh, God! Oh, my God. <laughs> that was awful. Uh, oh, that was that, dark. That was, that was pretty... That whole season was really dark, though. You have to admit that much. Yeah. But, Sarah, oh, I did you, not expect that. Uh, I think, Aaron, and weren't you and I both like, did they do that? Did they seriously just do that? <laughs> we were both kind of taken aback by that, I think. We were just like, did they... Like, the, the, the reason that we were kind of surprised though was because they cut away when the explosion happened and then you cut back you and see there was the, no sound and there you see the no crater and you're, and you're like what just did they actually holy shit and the tendril of smoke coming up <laughs> but I mean we all knew that season was going to be the darker one when they suffocated the life out of the Earth Queen which I still think is yeah. like one of the best moments of the series so far yeah like, I don't think a, I've I don't think I've been ever so happy to watch a character die. <laughs> not, 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 not even spoiler alert, Joffrey. Tag your spoilers, okay. <laughs> okay, actually, no, I wanted to do flips when that happened. <laughs> Take that back. But no, no, I, I totally agree with you, though. Um, and what's great, though, is that um, when, that ha- it, 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 when it happened, I wasn't even, like, you know, rooting for the Earth Queen to die. Because, uh, I mean, she I was, was a horrible person. 
but um, no, I was just watching. I'm like, oh my god, is this still a kid show? Are they making this for adults now? What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> um, and at, at that moment, though, not only was it like your queen's gone, hooray, but it was like these villains are actually doing something good, and it's like okay. Maybe they're not evil. Maybe they're actually trying to like change the world for the better. Mm-hmm. And then the following episode, they take Tenzin and the Airbenders hostage, and you're like, okay, well, that's shit over that idea, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I wish they had like another episode. They could have just like been good guys just a little longer. I know it would have been so good. And then her head could have exploded. <laughs> 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 Um, you knew she was gonna die when, like, the scene before they were saying "I love you." You knew something terrible. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And anytime you develop a character in that show, apparently they just get murdered. Yeah. I love you is a death, death sentence in that show, apparently. <laughs> Br- bro- brother, we can run away on this boat together. That sounds like a plan. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah, uh, I think we're getting off track from the finale, though. (laughs) Just a tiny bit. We're we're, we're talking about every finale. I guess we're still kind of on subject a bit. Yeah. So on the subject of Legend of Korra, we haven't strayed that far. We haven't strayed too far yet. Exactly. So how how about them, uh, them Philadelphia Eagles? (laughs) (laughs) But no, no, um, so... That basket hoops. That basket hoops, yeah. Sports ball. (laughs) Um... But what was I, what was I getting at? Um, but let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. But no, so it was really cool. The whole, like, everyone got a cut final bit to do. Um, Spear Portal. Yeah. Even the zombie's dead got a little bit at the end. I was kind of surprised yeah. by that a little bit. <clears throat> like, I know they had hinted at it earlier in the season by having him come back at all. Um, but just having him show up in the last scene, I'm like, okay, I should have seen this coming. I didn't. I'm a little surprised. Poor and Asami. Did Can I just say that? Yeah. What? Poor Asami. <laughs> He's just got wrecked. <laughs> yeah. And again, we had the I love you, Dad. Whap! <laughs> that's that's like straight out of Lion King right there. Right? <laughs> no! <laughs> Throw them to the wildebeest. <laughs> I am the king. No. But now, I mean, I mean. Bad. I, I, I think that uh, Asami's father finally did redeem himself, and that was something I don't think any of us expected, which is like, okay, you, you guys pulled that off pretty well. Yeah. yeah. No, he was kind of cutting it a bit close with having his daughter staying in there as the giant <laughs> hands were coming I'm, I'm surprised like, he just... Last second, last second, poof! <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't hit the eject button like like two minutes sooner. Like, he could have done that and no one would have cared. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um... What else? Uh, oh yeah, so there's one scene I remember from the series, or from that last episode too, that would look, just stands in my mind. It's the one scene where they throw the balloons at the uh, mech's face, and then his, <laughs> and then the laser beam just goes across the city, and you see the explosions behind Core. Like that just was like a, I don't know why it sticks out to me, but that's just a really cool framing shot right there. That was pretty cool. But, like, art-wise, they really kind of sold this last season, which I'm surprised by, given how short a production time it seemed like it had. <laughs> Their it, their art uh, artistry was like amazing, especially like I love Avatar: Last Airbender. Like that art was really great, but they really stepped it up on that. Uh, oh, Korra in general felt like a major step up. Like even from the very first episode, you're like, okay, this looks pretty, and they got a lot more detail than I ever expected. Keep yeah, it, keep up. Like I, I make fun of anime a little bit when I watch this show because I'm like, I love anime, but this sort of puts a lot of anime I've seen to shame. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Um, let's see. Is there anything else in the finale? Uh, okay, okay. So I guess last thing would be the uh, the big wedding scene. What you guys think of that one? Cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, buddy, camera on me. It's my big day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I like their pairing. I was so happy when they decided yes, we're gonna get married and everything. I'm just happy that Julie ended up being a good guy in the end. Like I sort of yeah. saw it coming, but it's yeah. like, I'm like. I'm like, I hope she's actually the mastermind behind everything, and she ends up being the f- true final villain. <laughs> <laughs> All these years of putting up with Varric have made her go insane, and now yeah. she's on a rampage. 
And then Varric's like, Julie, don't do the thing! <laughs> Uh, that, I feel like that'd be a good horror movie, though. Like Julie do the thing, and you just see her murdering everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Coming this summer, do the thing. <laughs> Julie for Summer Slam. <laughs> <laughs> We're titled the thing. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> I think they have like three movies called that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think so. <laughs> Actually, I think I saw a Photoshop of uh, Julie over the monster in in the thing. And you see, he's like Varric watermarked in the background, and it's like just the thing. <laughs> <laughs> for, for those who are watching in the podcast, I will like put up an image of that just so you can see what I'm talking about because it's a pretty funny image. <laughs> Not as funny as the, uh, uh, what is it, Varric as Iron Man image I've seen, but still good. Still good. Yeah, that I've seen the Varric as Iron Man one. That's funny. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I guess uh, series as a whole now, uh, do you think everything wrapped up as it should? Do you think there should have been more? Like, what do you guys think? Now that they confirmed it, I'm happy with the ending. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say that the ending felt very satisfactory. I mean, like, I, I, I don't know. I kind of hard to compare it to the Last Airbender because I don't think the stakes felt as high, but the no. tensions are definitely still the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Um, and there was a lot more going on in this one, too, so it was kind of hard to focus on any one thing in particular. Because, like, everyone had their own little storylines going into it, and then everything got resolved at the end, so... Yeah. Was, yeah, you had to resolve everything, otherwise everyone would be like, Oh, what the fuck? You didn't... You didn't explain... <laughs> you, you, did, you didn't make Mako feel like a bitch at the end. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I really like that they kind of carried over from the first Avatar with having, like, Team Avatar, basically. You know, you have your main group and that's repeated it was I like that um definitely one complaint and that is wanted more General Iroh Dante yes. Boss gotta eat <laughs> General Iroh would have been cool to see more of I was happy we got a lot of Boomy though he was a lot of fun oh yeah. Boomy Boomy <laughs> like he stole the show in seasons 2 and 3 not so much yeah. in 4 but definitely in 2 <laughs> Oh my god, when you realize he could airbend, I wanted to die laughing. It was fantastic. <laughs> oh, think fast, Uncle Boomy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, like, I, I think it's funny that the my, that season two is one that a lot of people seem to hate online, but that's like my favorite one because it introduces my two favorite characters, Boomy and uh, Varric. Yeah. And it's, it's like, you know, guys, stop hating on my on my season. That's one that's of my favorite characters. I, I know they get better in later seasons, but that's where it starts. I really like season two with having a lot of the spirit stuff involved. I honestly, I think season one, I like the least just because it was such a big transition from doing um, the last airbender with like all you. It very, it felt very much like elemental everywhere. I mean, you have the big cities and all that, but it wasn't like 1920s type city. And then all of a sudden you do this giant jump forward and it was really hard to transition to for me anyway. But once they started bringing back the spirit, it's like, oh yeah, we have the old Avatar back. Sort of. <laughs> um, yeah, season one definitely in hindsight feels like the weakest, but I mean, that makes sense. They wrote that and built that as an individual thing and didn't expect anything beyond that because that was like a like a demo season. It's like they threw yeah. it out there hoping someone would actually pick it up. Yeah. How about you, Nicole? What was your favorite season or Well, moments? I had a question for you guys. Since okay. Talking about the season as a whole, how did you guys feel about Janora finally becoming an airbe- airbending master? Very much deserved. I think that um, she was long overdue <laughs> for it in season three and then season four she didn't do much um, with it, but yeah. you know, for for what she did, though, it was still pretty interesting. I think she was very, very deserving of it as well. I was very, very happy to see that, and also I thought it was really cool that they did shave her head and did the tattoos and everything like that. And you have a female Airbender now, like or like Master. It was so cool. Well, I mean, they have had female Air Masters before. It's just that they've never been alive in the show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, no, the, the minute they shaved her head, though, I'm like, you look just like Aang. <laughs> That's not surprising at all. Imagine that. Yeah, you know, given that, you know, daughter and, or granddaughter and all that shit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, that, that was definitely good. Um, I think this show is definitely, if I could recommend any show for, like, young female, like, 
people who just want to inter- watch it, good entertainment, this is definitely the one. Because, I mean, there's, like, so many different strong female characters in here, it's hard to really p- pick any one as, like, good other than, or any one as bad. I mean, Korra is, like, probably the best one of all of them, really, so... In the in the end, I mean, at first she was kind of a bitch, but by the end she was. But by the end she by was. The great. End. By the end, yes. Okay, I have a question for you guys. Actually, what do you think about? Um, for it was season season three when Cora lost her connection to all the avatars. That all the connections there just vanished. What do you guys think of that? Was that in season two? I thought it was. Se- um, was I thought that was season three. When... No, no, it was in season two, two when, uh, when uh, what's his name, uh, Unalak, like, r- ripped apart, uh, what's his name, uh, Vatu. Or, oh, that's uh, Rava, right, Rava. that's right. Um, I feel like it's a really good way to reboot the series and just kind of start fresh so you don't have to have all that backstory with all those other avatars. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was kind of cool to see those avatars because you can kind of get a glimpse into what the world used to be like. If you Hunt every corner, you'll have more time for play. It's the American way. Yeah. Um, with uh, Last Airbender, there was a lot more lore. I think it it works with 